Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Sunday show. Glad to have everybody back. So we got a lot of things to go over, so let's just jump right in to the main point, which is we're talking about the portfolio. And this was actually a thing that we put together because everybody was asking about, well, how does this work as far as like with dollar cost average and some results moving forward as far as like what it would look like in a portfolio. So what I did was I just put together a very simple portfolio of the things that I actually buy and I invest into and I believe in, and we put it together and just said, let's start from September 1st and work our way forward. And those different cryptos, because I get a lot of those questions about like, what, what do you buy? What do you like? What, what's going into it? This is what I got. Uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, Cosmos, Arbitrum, Chainlink, Polkadot, Near, Polygon, Cardano, Algorand, and Dogecoin. Now, your coin might not, might not be on there, and that doesn't mean that your coin's awful, or I don't believe in it. It's just this is what I'm getting into at this particular moment. And... Some of these, I dollar cost average, I mean, my, me personally, every single day, some it's every week, and some it's every two weeks. But for this portfolio, we have to take a look at how we would do <clears throat> just dollar cost averaging, basic, basic, basic. And I gotta tell you, so when we put this together on September 1st, and again, I'm using Ben's website and the Cryptoverse, and this part right here for the uh, DCA stuff, uh, it's free, so there's a link in the description, but if you want some more advanced things like the macro charts and stuff like that, time and risk bands, uh, there is a cost for that. But for this one, it is free. And we're taking a look at, again, uh, Ethereum, Solana, Cardano, Doge, Polkadot, Matic, uh, Cosmos, Arbitrum, Near, and Algorand. And when we put this together, I personally thought I wasn't going to do too hot in September because September is usually rectember, right? Uh, the last five years, I think it's been pretty awful. But for some reason, you know, the market does the exact opposite of what we think it's going to do. And it actually went up. And then, and also in October, I thought, oh, well, we'll definitely be up too. <laughs> of course, that does the exact opposite of what we think. And I think we're down like one or 2%. But again, look at all these things. And we're doing this, the very basic 10 bucks a week. I don't think that would uh, crush too many people. And if we did that in all the different uh, cryptos that we have, I was kind of surprised. As of October 9th, uh, half of the cryptos would actually be up. Uh, and Solana would be the big winner. So if you were looking into this just in September, uh, you'd be up 10% on Solana. So you would have put in 60 bucks, you'd have $66 in Solana. Uh, Chainlink, you'd be up 9%. Bitcoin, only four. Algorand, which was underperforming for quite some time, 1.2%. ADA, not too much in Matic. And then the, the, um, the ones that didn't perform too well, uh, Cosmos or Atom, Ethereum, Arbitrum, one of my favorites, Dogecoin, another one of my favorites, Dot and Near which I think is gonna do pretty well next cycle, down 5%. And of course, again, I'm kind of flabbergasted because I, I thought uh, I wouldn't perform this well uh, in this amount of time. And I, I know some people will say, well, my crypto went up this and my crypto went up that. Sure, there's a lot of that, that we can look at that, can, that went up exponentially, but that's what we have for this piece. But we have to be fair and we have to really roll this time back because what if we didn't dollar cost average starting on August 29th or September 4th when I had this put in. Let's go back to 2022. Or actually, let's go to 2000, the beginning of 2023. Let's do that. Ba, 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 ba. And how would we have done starting on January 1st, 2023? Again, 10 bucks a week. How would we be doing? Eh, not too great, honestly. Chainlink, you'd be up 9%. Pretty good. Solana, 8%. And Bitcoin, 7.1. You would have put in 410, you would have had some but you've been losing pretty badly. And that's where I, I can't say losing. I mean, this is what I've done before. This is what I'm gonna do again, but you would just, your portfolio will be down. You don't lose unless you sell. And of course, in investing, you're never up all the time. And that's why I'm always talking about taking profits when things go up. And of course here, we're down a little bit. Arbitrum being the big loser, 45%. Let's, let's roll it back even more. Let's go back to 2022. And see how we do. Oof, pretty awful. You only be up Bitcoin 9%. Because 2022, January 1st, that's why after we hit our all time highs. But what if we would have done 2000, whoops, 2021 at the all time highs? Well, I've been pretty good over here. But again, keep going, you'd be only up 30%. But again, the time frame, it's all about the timing. How about 2020? Well, not too bad, actually. You'd be up. 787% on Matic. You'd be up 500% on Dogecoin. You'd be up 340% and so on and so forth. So again, I know people look at this and they're like, ugh, this looks pretty, you know, sometimes it looks not too great because we're only up 6% or we're down 10% or whatever else. 
it's really time in the market is more important than timing the market. And you can try and you know go for it, but uh, and of course, a lot of these cryptos won't come back. And we can, I'll take a look at that in a second, but I think I know in investing, and this is not investment advice, but not everyone's gonna be a winner. You just have to roll out the winners that uh, actually do produce, and that could be two out of 10 or three out of 20 or whatever else it is, and just ride those winners up. And that's what we're trying to do right here. So let me just think about that in the comments section. And also there's another option you have here if you were so inclined to do so, which is called dynamic DCA. And what it looks like is this, the time and risk bands. Again, you can find this on Ben's site. Uh, the time and risk bands is just the time when Bitcoin or Ethereum or Cardano or whatever else, when they're in this, this particular band for their price action. And right now, Bitcoin is currently in the 0 0.4 to 0 0.5 band. So we're actually over here. And if we take a look at it, what this means is instead of just dynamically DCAing $10 a week or a thousand bucks per week or $10,000 per day, whatever you're doing uh, as a baller, whatever you're doing, it's dynamically dollar cost averaging. So like for this one, I'd actually be over here. I'd actually be spending less this week because the time and risk band's a little bit lower. Now here's the rub. The thing is that you gotta be brave because as the price starts to decrease, you go on the, on the flip side, on the 0 0.2 to 0 0.3. So instead of spending hundred bucks a week, maybe you increase it 25% or 50% or whatever you want it to be. But what it means is that you're actually buying more as the price goes down and buying less as the price goes up. Now, for me, once we get to these, this risk band around 0 0.6 to 0 0.7, I'll probably be selling some things off. And there's a video in the, there's a link in the description where I go over all this stuff. But it's different for everybody. Like look at MicroStrategy. Michael Strategy doesn't care. Michael Saylor and Michael Strategy, they're buying, buying, buying all the way through, never selling, apparently. But then you got people like your friends who are gonna call you in the next bull run. And of course, they're not gonna buy until they get to the 0 0.8 to 0 0.9 or when it's like super overheated. And of course, these are the ones that call you the loser and a joke and it's dead. And you're, stuck, you're stupid for doing these types of things. So there's, again, different ways that you can do this moving forward. And um, me personally, I, I'm dynamically dollar cost averaging and we'll see. But the question then becomes, well, Rob, are we at our all time lows already? Because I mean, who knows, right? There is a, a link in the description for this spreadsheet called did it all time high. I took a look from 2017, actually up to 2023. And what was interesting in all these different cycles is that for the last cycle, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, XRP, Litecoin, Cardano, when, they're, when they were in the top 10. I took a look at how long it took till after their high in 2017 to when they dropped off to their all-time low. And what I found was that the majority, not the vast majority, but it was 20, 29 out of 53, most of them hit their all-time low one year after their all-time high. Just one year. Bitcoin's a prime example. Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash. Went from 2017 to the all-time high, 2018 was their all-time low. Just one year. But what was interesting, though, is that out of these, 24 out of 53 hit their all-time low in March of 2020. What happened in March of 2020? Well, that's when we had the Cerveza sickness, right? or Cerveza virus, whatever George Gammon says. I always forget what he says. And that was a big catalyst for people to sell off. But if we take a look at these, these numbers and these things, a lot of these things weren't coming back. So just take a look at March, besides XRP, which I still own actually. I just don't dollar cost average it. IOTA didn't really make too much of a splash. Monero did pretty good. Bitcoin Gold, no one knows what that is. Stellar, eh. Tron, still pretty good. Qtum, I don't even know if that's in the top 100. Opulus, I don't know what that is. Only see Go, I remember it. I just don't think it's around. Zcash is still working around somewhere. Stratus, does anybody know this stuff? And on and on and on, right? Verge, well, Dogecoin, it's not bad. Arc, uh, Decred, 
Komodo. I mean, stuff like this. I, I think these, these were already going to be, you know, dropping off the face of the planet. So the question you have to ask yourself now is, as everything moves forward and we get into this world global unrest, I don't know what's going to happen in the Middle East. I don't know what's happening uh, with the Fed. If they're going to continue with higher for longer, it looks like they are. I don't know if they're going to turn on the money printer anytime, which would really be great for liquidity, but would also be awful for inflation. And uh, you have to ask yourself, if a major war breaks out, which it could, would that mean that the market itself would crash a huge amount like it did when we had a global pandemic? Or would it be even more? I don't know. I have no idea. I'm not a geopolitical expert. I'm not going to weigh in on this. But uh, I will say that if that happens, and then, of course, we declare a recession, which I think is coming in Q1, maybe Q2 of next year, I still think we have some all-time lows for a lot of altcoins out there. But again, <laughs> been wrong before. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And then also, uh, the title and thumbnail, I talked about a Solana sell-off. And this was in my group, and they brought this to my attention about uh, FTX estate is staking 5.5 million Solana coins, which, let's be honest, is not a lot. But I just found it interesting, and there was a story that I, I just totally missed about uh, a sell-off of crypto from the FTX account uh, made made public by the creditors. Here's what we have. So 5.5 million Solana coins are being staked, it's fine. The coins staked are worth 122 million and represent a small fraction of FTX holdings of Solana, very small. So the FTX estate, which is overseen by a bankruptcy trustee, has the option of liquidating these holdings at any time, which again, don't everybody freak out and say, well, Solana's gonna crash. I mean, you know, we already had a big, a big dump of that. Maybe there's one coming. I have no idea. I don't have a crystal ball. But again, very small amount. But there's a lot of Solana actually tied up with FTX. Has the option of liquidating this holding at any time. Its primary role involves the recovery. This would be the FTX estate. The primary role involves the recovery of assets to the exchange's creditors. So everybody that got screwed over by FTX, which that case is going on right now, uh, their primary role involves getting the funds back to those people that got screwed over. In September, a United States court approved the sale of 1.3 billion in Seoul from FTX causing concerns. I don't remember this. I must have went over me, I forgot. So to avoid adding burdens on the crypto market, the bankruptcy court demanded the sale occur through an investment advisor in weekly batches. I didn't know this was going on right now, but apparently every week, they're selling it off. This, the, the decision drove Seoul's price to a two-month low of $17.34 on September 11th. And that's the thing. I took a look back here. Thankfully, I was dollar-cost averaging Solana. <laughs> and it worked out great because I caught it right here. Now, does that mean that Solana can't go below $17.62 in a couple of months or six months and when World War III breaks out? Who knows? I have no idea. But, uh, I mean, right now... That was the lowest point for quite some time. And then here we go. Actually, let me see. How about 180 days? 1451 in June 2023. How about a year? I think it went to like nine bucks. Yeah, there it was. December 2022, $9. And thankfully, I was dollar cost everything back then too. But uh, I've also had some stinkers. So that's just how it is. But yeah, this is actually happening right now. And then the question that I had was, well, how much crypto does FTX hold? Well, FTX holds 3.4 billion. 3.4 billion in digital assets, eh? The top 10 assets the company holds, Solana, Bitcoin, Ether, Aptos. And I thought to myself, well, let's extrapolate that out. How much is that total? And where does this story actually come from? So this was actually September 13th, quarter approved sales of FTX digital assets, up to 3.4 billion to be unleashed. So far, so good, honestly. Uh, again, FTX will be allowed to sell digital assets. And this is the strange thing. FTX will be allowed to sell digital assets because if you're thinking about 3.4 billion of uh, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and everything else, that's pretty bad. But it says here, excluding Bitcoin, Ether, and certain insider-affiliated tokens. I thought they were insiders for Solana, but I guess not. There will be limits of 50 million for the first week, then 100 million in subsequent weeks, and then there's an option to raise that to 200 million per week with approval of the court. This sounds like something like, uh, 
like for uh, Stellar Founder, uh, I forgot a guy's name, who actually had a ton of XRP and kept dumping on the XRP community every single month. Pretty awful. And then to finish up, according to a recent shareholder update, FTX has 833 million worth of Bitcoin and Ether, but it said in the very beginning that that was excluded, so I don't know. According to the shareholders report, FTX holds 3.4 billion. So that's what's happening. And then that also got me thinking of this. Well, is all this locked up? Because, I mean, FTX and a ton of VCs were involved in Solana. People call it a VC coin. I don't really care. It seems to work pretty well, whatever. And, of course, people will always say, ah, but all it has these shutdowns every single week. No, it doesn't. Stop that. It doesn't have shutdowns every single week. There are shutdowns every so often, but I think it's decreasing. The thing that I thought about was this. Well, what kind of unlocks are we dealing with? Because people are always talking about dumping. You're going to dump me. You're going to dump me. You're going to dump me. Remember, it's up to you to decide when you buy and sell. And some people, some insiders will not dump on you because they're underwater as well. But if we can take a look at, there's a great website, a link in the description called tokens.unlocks.app. And you can also find this on CoinGecko as well, but it's not as, like in CoinGecko, you can take a look at tokenomics. It'll just tell you like, like a static picture, which is, you know, fine. But this one over here, it'll tell you, it'll bring you up and say, this is who's unlocking. This is how much is being unlocked. This is how much putting into it. And it breaks down by the different sectors, like the pools, the foundation, staking, all that stuff. And we can see that on May 5th, 2020 is when the unlocks, or people will call that dumping, uh, go out. Remember, some of these people were investing for a year, year plus, and then they got vested and the time comes up and they were able to do whatever they want with it. That's called investing. And we can just see here that there was a lot. And then of course we hit this cliff here on January 13th, 2021, and it went okay. And then right around February, 2022, see these numbers moving? Actually over here, the foundation, the validator strategic ground. And now you can see which numbers are moving a little bit, which is, it comes to inflation. It's an, it's an inflationary crypto, I believe. Correct me in the comment section. They gotta pay for all the staking rewards, right? All the validators and stuff like that. And as, we're, as of today, founder strategic ground, validator round, founding, seed, foundation, grant community, and coin list auction, interesting. Um, they're not moving. It's mostly just, well, it's all inflation moving forward. So right now it looks like everything is unlocked and most of this will be inflation, which a lot of different cryptos and digital assets actually are inflationary because they have to pay for all the staking rewards. They have to pay for, they have to keep the lights on, all this stuff, right? So for this one, I don't think it's as big as a concern as people might make it out to be. However, I hope it does go down because I'm actively dollar cost averaging and that'll be great to get a discount because as time moves on, I think someone will do pretty well. Anyhow, that's all we have for that little piece. And then lastly, I just wanted to bring a little uh, clarity to everybody who follows me on Twitter. On Twitter, there's an option right now. I'll just show you right now. So you can click on post and see right here where it says everyone can reply. You can click on that and you can put on verified accounts which means all the people with the blue check. And people despise this because they don't want to pay for it, which is fine. I mean, I don't know what it, I think it's like eight or 10 bucks a month. You don't want to pay for it, don't pay for it. I don't care. I pay for it because I want to use it. But when I put this out, people are saying, well, are you just going to use that? And then everybody who pays can see your tweets and then we won't see your tweets who don't pay? No, I decided against doing that. I think it's uh, right now it's not going to work out because the whole point of this whole thing of, let me rewind this. The whole point of this was to stop the bots. So there was a, a, a news article from, well, it was MetaMask tweeted out that they were back on the Apple store and then they got taken off and they got put back on again. So if you know anything about Twitter, crypto Twitter, if you tweet anything about MetaMask, you're going to have about 30 different bots in there going, hey, I can help you. I'm with uh, MetaMask support. Just send me your private keys and I'll help you out. It's stupid. So with this one, I tried it out. I said, you know what I'm going to do? Let's see if this actually works. So I clicked on verified accounts, which you can see right here, or accounts mentioned by news asset can reply. And I thought, and I said right here, uh, after, okay, after another bump in the, the road, MetaMask is back. I turn on the verified accounts for this retweet because if not, because I can't spell, I get a whole bunch of bots. Let's see if it happens with only allowing the verify to be able to reply to this tweet. 
And guess what happened? See, it's right there. And uh, my man here, Zero Bet says, Zero Bet says, yep, I can already see it in the comments. And I was like, no way. And there it is. Envy, the strategy that shines. And if you've been on crew of Twitter, you know what I'm talking about. This is a x.com ETH Neil one. They're just bots. And whether that be a scam or not. And of course, I went through the, the profile, and this individual is got a blue check mark. And then I went to this Neil.eth. It's okay, there you go, right there. You know it's not, it's not legit when it says stuff like this. Why only so few people know about this is beyond me. It's literally making me like 15 ETH a week insane. That is probably a scam. I didn't want to go down the rabbit hole, but this is what it was. And again, these are verified accounts. There's the blue mark, and I turned it on. So I'm just letting everybody know I'm not going to do that again because what's the point? And that's it. So... That's it for today. Just want to show that to everybody and say that I'll not be doing that because it makes no sense to me. That's it for today. Like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Everything talked about is time sensitive.